One of the more common situations is when one is seeking to compare two independent samples to determine if the means for each sample are statistically significantly different. In this case, the samples may differ in sample size, sample mean, and sample standard deviation. These are just two samples, not samples that are in any way connected pairwise or dependent on each other. Case one uh, is the null hypothesis. There, there is no significant difference between the sample means. Both samples have means that could have come from the same population. Put another way, the potential population means implied by each sample could be the same. Case two, the alternate hypothesis. The two samples have a significant difference in the sample means. The samples have means that did not come from the same population. This is a situation in which we would reject the null hypothesis. Today we'll be using the t-test function. That's actually talked about after a couple sections on how to use confidence intervals, should you wish to, to run this kind of test. But for simplicity, we'll just run a t-test to get a p-value that will tell us whether we fail to reject the null hypothesis or reject the null hypothesis. And the example we'll be taking will come from the, the world of botany, seen here. This is a plant called Osimum tenui florum, known on Kosha as Aring, on Pompeii as Katering, on Chuk as Warung, and in Yap as Lamar. This is a plant growing in the sun. The plants that grow in the sun appear to have slightly larger leaves than the plants that grow in the shade. They appear to have smaller leaves. That's something that we can potentially show to be statistically significant or not with a test of a difference in the mean lengths of the leaf blades for the sunny and shady plants. So I've randomly selected leaf blades, measuring them in centimeters for plants in the sun and plants in the shade. This is what Simon Tenui Florum has said, said here. And at the bottom, I've already calculated the mean for the plants in the sun. You can see the function there, the average function, and the mean for the plants in the shade. There is a difference in the means, but it's not a large difference. Now here, these two samples are not pairwise. I happen to take the same number of leaves from the sunny plant as from the shady plant. They both have the same number of leaf measurements, but they are in no way paired. There is no connection between column B values and the column C values. They are not connected in any way. So the sunny plant has an average blade length of 3.66 centimeters, and the shady plant, the plants growing in the shade have an average leaf length of about 2.45 centimeters. We do want to calculate the standard deviation for each. This will be important in our t-test function in a moment, as I'll explain. And we choose our alpha as we always do as at 0 0.05. This difference is rather small. We're talking about a one centimeter difference between the sunny and the shady plants here. Not a very large difference at all. Is it statistically significant? Well, I'll run a t-test to see. There's my t-test function, and I will select the uh, one column and then the shady plant column. The order it works does not matter. I'm still going to use a two-tailed test, and this time I'm going to use test type 3. This is where the type comes into play. Test type 2 can be used if the standard deviations are the same. But these standard deviations are not the same, so I cannot use test type 2 and should not use test type 2. These two standard deviations differ. Test type 2 is really a special circumstance, and you're safest if you just use test type 3, which is two independent samples with different standard deviations. You can Tap on that t-test bubble there, and then go down to learn more about the t-test. To 
see the details on how that particular the particular type function works. Two is when you have equal variance. The variance is just the square of the standard deviation. Those are called homosedastic. If the two sample standard deviations or their square, which is the variance, are equal, you can perform type two. But we usually have unequal variance, which is unequal standard deviations. The variance, again, being the square of the standard deviation. Those are called heterosedastic tests. So nice, big, fancy words. If someone asks you what you learned today in school, you can tell them, oh, I learned about homosedastic and heterosedastic. Don't worry, we won't be testing on those. So we go back to our spreadsheet and close our little help window there and click on the check. We can see here that our t-test value is 0 0.002. That's actually our p-value. The t-test gives us our p-value, and our p-value is less than our alpha. That means it's surprising. Smaller than our chosen alpha, we have a surprising mm -hmm. result. And by surprising, what we mean is that the, the sample means are different. We are surprised by the difference between the two. That means we're in case two. We uh, reject the null hypothesis. Our sample means come from different populations. There is a real difference between the leaf lengths between the plants in the sun and the plants in the shade. So the t-test function and the p-value give us a way to rather quickly determine whether two samples have statistically significantly different sample means. Now here we're doing an example from botany, but this same function could be used anytime we're trying to determine if two samples have different sample means. Maybe we gave a reading test in two different schools, and we want to know whether one school performed statistically significantly better than the other school. This test would tell us between those two schools. Uh, which one had done better. Uh, it takes a bit of modification to go beyond a pair, beyond two samples, if you have to do three, four, or five samples. But some of the principles are basically the same. You determine a p-value, and then you may have to use a corrected alpha for multiple tests. But the basic idea is you look for a p-value that's less than your chosen alpha. And that will give us whether there's a difference. The one thing this can't tell us is whether this difference is a large effect, a medium effect, or a small effect, that's something we'll tackle in the next section. Now that we have a statistically significant difference, we can look at whether that difference is of a large effect, medium effect, or small effect. What is the effect size, we'll learn to call it. Just because we have a difference doesn't mean there's a large effect size in that difference. And so... That's coming up in a future section.